Hi everyone, it's Lawrence here from Revit Structure Blog. In this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how to model a foundation and a column using Revit Structure 2019. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on in situ concrete and reinforcement bar. Now in a lot of videos, uh, you'll see the use of macros here, um, and you know that's great if you've got a very a simple structure and you, you want to use the standard macro reinforcement but I'm really keen to show you how to manually model this reinforcement so you get a really good understanding and feel for what's possible in Revit. Now the only things I've got set up here is I'm actually using my standard Revit 2019 RC template and I've got a couple of grids modeled. Other than that it's all straightforward easy Revit. So let's go to structure and we'll start by placing in a foundation. So this particular foundation actually has a kicker modelled in as well. We'll then cut a section through this and we'll then start to model the reinforcement bar that we need to see. So I can select the RC element, go to rebar. Um, this is just saying that the hooks will not be included within the shape code. We can then choose our shape from the shape browser. So in this case it's going to be 21. We want the reinforcement bar to be parallel to our work plane. And again here I'm going to use a B20 as my grade and diameter. We'll then place our first reinforcement in. Now I'd like to start thinking about cover here. So I can select my uh, cover tool up here. We can go to pick elements and I'll select the entire element. And I'll set a global cover here of 40 millimeters. But then what I really want to do is select a local cover on this face here. And we'll make that 70. Notice that the green dotted line has now moved, so we've got 40 around all the faces and 70 on the bottom face of the foundation. Now, of course, I want more than one reinforcement bar, so I can now select this bar. We can go to maximum spacing and set the spacing to 200. Okay, so let's now go back to our level zero plan. We'll create a new section through here. And we'll put some reinforcement in the opposite plane. Now, as soon as I uh, cut this section here, you can actually see all of my existing uh, reinforcement in there. So we'll now pick the element, go back to rebar. Revit will remember all of the settings we've all also used here, so I can just quickly place that bar in. But of course, you'll see it's on the wrong layer. So we can just use a shape handle to move that, or what we should really do is use edit constraints here. So in this case, I'm going to pick this um, B dimension here. We'll select the cover. And in this example, we want that to be um, minus 20. Yep. OK, so that's exactly where we want it. Now, it looks a bit odd here. That's due to the section I've cut. So if we go back to the plan view here, let's just shift that along a little bit. Go back into the view. Yep, that looks a bit better. And of course, what we want to do again is we want to actually select multiple bars to be shown. So in order to seal the reinforcement, we have to select it first. And then in the properties palette, we can say view visibility states and view unobscured, view as solid. Yep, there we have it. Now, again here, I want more than one bar. So we can say maximum spacing, 200. And there's our bottom two layers of rebar. Now, it's not quite working in this uh, particular view, so we can start to edit this. Now, I'm just going to initially use my shape handles here to get this roughly where um, I want it then we can accurately set it again with constraints. So let's go to edit constraint here. I'm going to take this constraint uh, from the edge of the uh, element there and that will be minus 125. We'll do the same here, minus 125. And we can do that for the opposite um, bars now. Minus 125 and again on here to there minus 125. Okay, so that's all those bars uh, secured and set. So this is going to be my B2 layer in here. Notice as soon as I type that in, uh, Revit then changes the color of that. That's according to my view filters and this will be B1. Okay, so that's done. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to select the foundation base here and give this a mark. So we'll call this one F01. Right, so that's my um, foundation done and my reinforcement added in manually. What we'll now do is create the column. So back onto the structure ribbon, we can select the column tool, 
and place this. Now what's actually happened here is the column's gone from level zero, so it's forced the foundation to move down. I have to take into account that I've got the kicker here, so I'm going to change my base offset to 150. What we'll now do is go to our level, um, level one plane, and we can now start to place out our reinforcement bar in the column. So same sort of tools, we'll go back to rebar here, we'll select B10 in this example, and we'll place in a link, so that's going to be shape 51, let's go ahead and find that in the list, there it is. Spacebar to orientate the hooks, we'll select the element again, reinforcement bar, and we now want shape 00, and this will be perpendicular to cover, and again I can choose B20. Notice how Revit will snap to the link. Yep, so we'll place those four main bars in. And of course, I don't want just one link here. I want quite a few links, so we'll put maximum spacing in. And again, while I'm here, I can select all of these bars. Quick way of doing that is to select all the rebar in the host. And we can then just, again, view those unobscured and as solid in that 3D view. There we have it. So, what we now need to start thinking about is the starter bars yep, to come up to our kicker here. So, we'll do that back in a sectional view. So, if we go back to our level zero plan, I'm going to take this section view here, just shift this up a bit. Now, initially, I'm going to model it here, yep, but then we'll have to move the uh, bar afterwards. So, we'll select the host, click rebar. This time, I'm going to sketch it. Now, what you'll notice here is I can produce a fairly rough sketch of my L bar, or my starter bar, coming up through here. Um, what we can then do is just use good old Revit tools here to be able to um, set the leg lengths we actually require here. I'll set this one a bit later on and we'll say finish. Now, what I've just done here is just sketch this very roughly and you can see um, Revit automatically detects the shape code from this, so it's shape code 11, which is great. We'll move this roughly into the right space over here, and of course we'll then use edit constraints to make sure we're setting this in exactly the right plane. So we'll go back to the cover here, and what we want to do is set that back to um, zero, so that's actually on the cover in there. Now in actual fact we don't want to do that because that's got to be inside the link of course. Yep. So we'll set that to 10, and there we are. There's our first L bar created and again I need to actually edit the constraint down here as well so I'm going to go from the cover and that's minus 40 good so there's my first bar created now while I'm here I can actually mirror that across like so we can select both the bars now and if we go back into our level zero plan we can now make sure that we're moving these um, to the correct location so again, we could do this with our constraints. Yep, so we'll set that, um, let's do that minus 25 in there, give ourselves a bit of space. And the same thing over here. Yep, that'll be minus 25. And once again, we can then select those bars and we can mirror them over the center line of the column. So now that we've got those bars select, um, so those bars uh, mirrored, we can then select them. And again, we can make sure that we are able to visualize those in 3D. Let's just make sure we choose the right 3D view. Uh, back into 3D. And we can now see the column starter bars modeled. And really what we should do here is make sure that they're on the B3 layer. And I'll just put a link, uh, a note in here, so I'll just call these uh, links. Okay, that's all looking quite nice. So what we can now do is start to look at the bar bending schedule. Now before we can do that, we really uh, just need to set the mark on the column here. So I'll just call that C1. And if we go back into our um, reinforcement, we'll make sure we select all the rebar and give it a partition. Now the partition in this example is really just the drawing number. So in this case it's DWG01. If we go into our schedule, you can now see we've got a full schedule to 8666-2005, everything um, working as we'd expect. And if I just go into the drawing sheet here, 
you can see as well as having all of the elements um, modeled up and detailed there we've also got the weight as well now while we're here we can obviously copy these elements across so we'll select um, all the elements in 3d so we want the column and the foundation here uh, back into our plan and of course we can copy this across like that uh, we'll go into 3d what I'm going to do here is grab all the foundation pads and I think we called those ones F01 and we'll do the same thing with our columns as well so we'll select all the columns because they're all the same size of course and they're going to be C1s Oops. let's just get rid of the apostrophe I've added in there okay so what will now happen if we go back into our um, drawing you can now see that Revit's automatically tracked the fact that we've got three members in there and it's then calculated the total number of bar and again calculated the weight of rebar or reinforcement. Okay, so all we now need to do is start thinking about uh, a drawing. So this is my uh, drawing sheet. Let's go ahead and create uh, a view on this. So what we're going to do here, we'll just use this section. Um, let's call this one uh, column. Okay, we'll go into the section and we can now start to detail this accordingly. Right. So first thing I want to do is start to mark these bars down here. So we can go to annotate and we're just going to use our normal tag tool in here. So we'll tag one of these. This is not going to be um, a tag like this. We simply just want to call up the bar mark in this case. We don't really need a leader in this example and we'll place that down there. And then we can just copy that into place where we want it. So, yeah, we could obviously just do a couple of these, or we can just go along and make sure we get all the bar marks in, like so. Uh, we can then go ahead and place some more. So, what I'm going to do now is show you a range indicator on these links here. Now, in this case, I um, just want to show one of the links. So, we'll do, um, well, let's do select here, and we'll pick the link we want to show in there. And I can just go ahead and use a multi rebar annotation yeah, to place that. If I want to show these um, as single lines rather than the full profile, we can just change the display to course um, detail in there, and you can now see all the reinforce reinforcement bar is shown in course. Yeah, we'll change that to 25. Going here, we can just grab all of those, just shift them down a bit, like so. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll just finish off by placing in a uh, break symbol in there. Okay, let's just put break line up in there somewhere. Maybe like that. Cut the section back. Yeah, we don't need to see this section here. Okay, and I'm now ready to pop this onto a drawing sheet. So we'll just hide the boundary, like so. We'll go back into our drawing and of course here we can now drag and drop that view onto the drawing sheet. Okay, we can um, change the name here so we can say RC column. Yep, there's our um, there's our column and base um, modelled up and of course uh, don't forget that we've um, got full schedule and the weight as well and all of that on its own drawing sheet. Okay, hope that was useful. If you want to learn a little bit more about reinforcement and Revit, uh, feel free to uh, go onto the Excitec website and if you type in um, or just do a search for reinforced concrete detailing, you'll find that we do a one day course where you'll get our free template and everything um, I've shown you here plus more. Okay, hope that was useful.